This video is going to demonstrate how to use the Pulse um, Lab Shop software to do a hammer modal test. You can see in the video here the system that we're looking at. This is a um, slightly older IDE hard drive. Um, you can see the, the hard drive here. There's the top. Um, this is the power connector and the IDE cable connector. Um, uh, and we're measuring the response here with uh, one accelerometer, a small um, low sensitivity accelerometer, and I'll excite the, the hard drive with this instrumented hammer. So the hard drive is resting on um, some soft foam, and the hard drive is stiff enough that the foam basically acts as a free uh, boundary condition. So it's as if the hard drive is floating in the air. The goal here is to illustrate how to approach a test like this, how to determine the bandwidth to test, the settings, um, the analysis window settings. Um, we'll look at different hammer tips in a moment. And um, also to show how to do that within the context of the Pulse software. So I'm using the MTC hammer template, um, a modified version of that. And um, we'll go to hardware setup. You already know how to set things up, so I'll just point out that the um, force is connected, the, the hammer is connected to channel one the accelerometer is connected to channel 2 and everything is set for both of those. And then I've predefined the geometry. I won't talk much about that. Um, the geometry is basically a rectangle. Uh, we'll just be looking at out-of-plane bending of the hard drive. And um, I set up a grid where I might want to measure. Um, in the next step I've set up the measurement degrees of freedom. So all the black dots are points that um, that I'll be hitting with the hammer. Can't see the icon here, but if I take um, this one's 0.8, if I take that and I change that to X in the plus direction, you can see that each each point where the hammer is going to be hitting is is shown with this kind of an icon. The accelerometer is down here, and you can't really see that because there's a hammer on top. If I was to temporarily change that to X minus, there you can see the the symbol for the accelerometer. The accelerometer is measuring in the positive upward direction. Everything else, it, I'll be hitting downward onto the hard drive. So I want all of these to be um, in the Z minus direction. So I can select and change them all simultaneously like that. Okay, um, and then the only other thing to do is to set the measurement sequence. Um, uh, I'll just stick with the default sequence, which is the order that the points were laid down. Okay, so here's where we finally have to start um, thinking a little. The analysis setup, we need to determine the bandwidth and the frequency spacing that we want. Now looking at this, I might have a guess at what the natural frequencies are. Um, it's a fairly uh, stiff case. Uh, the newer hard drives would be even stiffer. This one probably is only 5400 RPM or maybe even a little slower than that. But uh, the new ones that go at higher speed will be even stiffer. But, um, you know, I would guess that the first natural frequency is 100 hertz at least. So I probably need to capture um, 10 or 20 kilohertz. So I'll start with a pretty wide uh, bandwidth, and then we'll narrow that down if that ends up being excessive. It's always a good idea to start with a wide bandwidth so that um, we could avoid any aliasing. So um, that's the bandwidth, and I'll set um, 6,400 lines. These days, computers are fast. We might as well measure as many lines as we can. That still only gives me a, a quarter of a second sample time. So um, each measurement will be very quick. <clears throat> and later, I'll need to check that the vibrations actually do decay within that time window. OK, the next thing we could do is the double hit detector. Um, it's a little intricate and a little picky, so I won't, we won't talk about that today. Um, we'll go straight into the hammer trigger. So now we're ready to um, set up the hammer, tr hammer trigger. We need to tell the, the software what level of measurement should it start recording at. So um, I'll initialize the data acquisition system. If you, you could see that the, um, the lights have turned green on the front. So now I can click Start, and um, I can start to do a few taps just at a few points at random. 
And um, these are these are light taps. So I'll hit at a few different points on the structure and try to see um, to see what kind of levels I get. Okay, so here's a soft one. There's a little bit harder, soft, a few different points. Okay, and you can see in the window um, what we got. So um, it looks like setting the, you know, the noise is quite low, so setting the level about here um, will assure that, um, that I'll capture even a very light hit. Um, so, this, so this setting looks good. Um, I could also adjust here to control the hysteresis. Um, of the of the window. Here we could click zoom first event to see in a little more detail um, all the settings. So there's a delay. What happens is here's where it detects the first positive slope that crosses um, the threshold and then it will back up um, a certain amount to make sure that the whole rise of the pulse is captured and um, so all of that looks good. So we'll apply those settings and we can go to hammer waiting. Here what, what we can do is set up a window that will um, erase anything except for the impulse of the hammer. So I'll hit start. Now it's waiting for a trigger. So I tap this and you can see what I got. Now what, what the, the nice thing about this is that um, if I set down the hammer or the hammer gets bumped after the fact, that will be erased by this window. And um, I can adjust things here, see how this works. Um, the, green, the blue is the measured signal, and the green is the signal after applying the window. Now we'll look at the response weighting. If we start here, and I tap once, you can see what the accelerometer measures. We can see um, at this point it doesn't look like we're seeing much vibration. It looks like we're seeing maybe just the rigid body vibration and um, not much on top of that. But um, so I'll go with this. Um, a good rule of thumb for a window like this, you want to about double the damping in the system. So um, here, if we can't really see the decay envelope too well, but it looks like things are you know, mostly damped by the end of a time record. So we'll add enough damping to approximately cut in half the amount of time it takes for the vibrations to damp. Okay, now we're ready to start um, taking some measurements. Uh, we won't do any calibration. So we can go here to measurement and um, see how all these settings will work. So let's go ahead and start. I'll adjust the zoom here so I can see what's happening. Okay, and then I'll select which point I want to measure. And you can see as, as I pick different points, I'm, it's switching. Um, the, the hammer icon is moving around down here. So I'll start at point one, and this tells me visually that up in the top corner is where I should be um, hitting. Um, I set three averages. This will tell me where I am there. Um, okay, and so we're ready to get going. So everything's initialized. Now we can start. The FFT analyzer is turned yellow, saying that it's ready to acquire a measurement, but it's not triggered yet. So I'll give it a tap, and green means that it... Um, it triggered and got a measurement, and away we went. So let me um, keep, actually, before, we, before I decide whether to, hit, to accept that hit, I'd really like to be able to see, the, um, to see the input as a function of time. So, um, and for some reason it's not showing up in my, in my function group, so I'll add a measurement, a time measurement, um, a measurement of the force signal as a function of time. Okay. So if we do that, we should now see um, the force as a function of time. Um, <clears throat> okay, so here you can see the hammer pulse, and if we zoom in, you can see that a little better. So here's the impact. It's a single impact. Things look reasonably good, um, so we can go right ahead. Now you'll see that the frequency response, though, isn't um, isn't much to look at just yet. Let's take a couple more measurements, though, and and see. Let's try a few averages. So I'll hit um, the same point two more times. That time I got a bit of a double hit. 
I'll undo that for now. Uh, there's a, a better hit. And um, let's get one more and look at what we have here. And now um, the software is set up to automatically save when I get to three hits and go to the next point. Rather than go on, though, I'm going to back up and look at what we have here to see whether our settings are okay. So um, a couple things to notice. Um, so the coherent estimate of how um, reliable the frequency response is. And what we're seeing is that the coherence is, is only reasonable up to about uh, 6,000 hertz. So why might that be? Well, to answer that, I've plotted the force spectrum here. This is um, the hammer input uh, as a function of frequency. And what you can see is that it's um, strong um, only out to about 500 hertz or so. And after that, it becomes uh, weaker and weaker, and eventually it's probably dominated by noise. So the hammer with this um, soft rubber tip is only really exciting the um, system out to about 500 hertz, but we're measuring out to 25,000. So uh, most of this we expect to be garbage, but now we would, we would think that if we were to zoom in down here in the lower frequency range, uh, we might have a reasonable measurement. And again here, um, this looks pretty challenging. I can't see too much that really looks like a, a vibration mode. Perhaps we, perhaps we haven't really excited any. You know, the input, we've only really put a really good input in down to about 500 hertz. So at this point, the question we need to ask is, um, is this input exciting all of the modes that we care about? Um, if so, we need to reduce the analysis bandwidth down to something more reasonable, maybe to 4,000 hertz. Or we need to change the input so that we excite more modes. And um, let's go that route. So here we're using a rubber tip. I'll take this one off. And I'll change it. Uh, we'll go to the other end of the spectrum. I'll change it for a metal tip. Um, this tip will excite uh, is much harder, so it'll excite out to much higher frequencies. And uh, I'll make sure it's on there. And um, now we can start a new measurement. And uh, everything it will beep at me for a little bit. And when it's ready to go, the, uh, the bar is yellow. So let's try that. Now, um, changing tips can sometimes make it more difficult to avoid double hits. Um, let me try to see if I can get a fairly clean hit. With, with such a hard tip, tip I'm not hitting um, very hard at all. Um, <clears throat> and now, um, if you look at the auto spectrum, you can see immediately that this is putting quite a bit more energy. And now we're seeing um, seeing some energy into the system out to 4,000 hertz, maybe 8,000 or more. So let's see if we can get three averages. Um, again, not too happy with that one, so I'll undo that last hit. That was a very, very soft hit, but it uh, seemed to work. And um, I got a double hit there, but we'll live with it and go on. So um, now, if we were to zoom in, again, there still isn't too much that looks like a mode of vibration, um, even in this bandwidth where we know we've excited things. But the coherence is good, suggesting that we do have a reasonable measurement. OK, so at the moment with the metal tip, um, this is what we have. If, so if we wanted to test out to about four to 8,000 hertz, um, this hammer tip seems to be working pretty well. Um, just to be complete, though, let's try one other option. We do have one other tip in the bag, and this is a hard plastic tip. Um, this is something between the metal and the um, rubber tips that we've looked at so far. So now we're back at the, the corner point here. Um, a slight double hit, but not too bad. And this tip, you can see, is exciting about out to about 2,000 hertz, you know, reasonable maybe out to 6,000 or so. So this one might be a good choice. And you can see here we get coherence. Um, after two hits, at least, it, we have coherence out through almost the entire band, even though we're only really exciting well in this region. And now let's zoom in again down here and see uh, if this is our band of interest. Are we getting a, a reasonable measurement? And um, we're getting something, at least. So let's go ahead and go with this tip. 